Good, um, good morning everyone to, to everyone in Europe and um, good evening if you're in Asia. Um, my name is Hannah Warrior. Welcome to the second um, of our Affiliate Summit webinar series on the Asia opportunity. Um, now this morning um, we have iPress Group presenting on the state of the e-commerce um, market in Southeast Asia. Um, and presenting from iPress Group we have um, the CMO, Matteo Suto. Um, so Matteo um, has been involved with e-commerce for the past six years since he moved to Southeast Asia from Italy. Um, he was Regional Director of Marketing at Zalora um, uh, and, and then it's his own fashion e-commerce startup. Um, since 2016 he's been with iPrice Group leading growth and marketing and iPrice is, has now grown to become the leading e-commerce lead generator of Southeast Asia and work with all the major e-commerce players in the region. Um, so I'm actually really excited uh, about, about today's um, presentation. Um, there will be opportunity um, to ask Matteo questions um, at the end of the presentation, which should last around 20 minutes. Please submit your questions um, as we go, um, and then we'll come to them at the end. Um, okay, so I'm gonna hand over to Matteo now. Thank you. Thank you so much for the for the introduction and thank you for uh, giving me the chance to to present our uh, our study. I know there's quite a few uh, attendees uh, that are partner of of IPRES Group, so that's that's very nice to you know to see the the list of uh, of attendees and of of friends attending the webinar today. Um, so to get started, um, I wanted to first. Um, go through some of the main events that impacted the, the, the e-commerce market in Southeast uh, Asia in the past um, in the past 12 months. Um, so what has happened uh, among the the many among the, the many major events? Um, Amazon finally made its debut in in July of of last year, so approximately one year ago in the in the smallest of the Southeast Asian market. Uh, that is uh, Singapore um, has been struggling a bit uh, to basically gain uh, you know dominant uh, market share in the you know in the country and he is actually it is actually rumored to be opening uh, and, and widely expected to be opening other you know, other offices and focus on additional markets uh, in the region um, then another major uh, events uh, are the ones that uh, impacted Garena, that's now um, named SEA, that first raised more than 600, uh, 600 million, then IPO in, uh, in the US in September of last year for a, a 1 billion US uh, IPO, and then just recently. Uh, raise additional 500 million uh, convertible debts to further fuel their uh, Southeast Asian e-commerce um, ambition and, and expansion. Um, then at the same time, uh, Alibaba, uh, one of the, uh, the two e-commerce giants in, uh, in China, further invested uh, $1 billion in uh, Lazada um, that uh, was the, basically, the, the, the major regional player um, back then to further increase their their ownership of uh, of the company. Uh, at the same time, Alibaba also last year invested an additional one billion dollar in uh, Indonesia and only basic commerce called uh, Tokopedia. While at the same time, the major uh, rival e-commerce rival, uh, major Chinese e-commerce rival in China, JD of Alibaba, JD.com. Um, further uh, fuel its ambition, its growth ambition in, in the region. Um, so what happened is um, very recently uh, JD um, launched their uh, e-commerce uh, platform in, in soft launch of their e-commerce platform in Thailand. They recently obtained more than 500 million funding from Google, uh, part of which will be uh, allocated towards uh, Southeast Asian um, expansion. Uh, then, at the same time, towards the uh, the end of last year, and for the ones of you that are uh, based in the region that are familiar with the market, 
Uh, last two months of the year is uh, really the shopping festival here in Southeast Asia with 11-11 and 12-12 um, basically shopping events. Um, Lazada uh, recorded uh, more than 250 million of gross merchandise uh, um, value and final and grand final shopping event of, of the year. So all those uh, all those different events uh, basically led and justified the the massive growth of the Southeast Asian e-commerce market that in just two years from 2015 and 2017 as you can see from the data here uh, and source is the Google Temasek uh, e-commerce report of 2017 grew basically doubled from 5 billion 2015 to uh, 11 billion last year with a uh, annual growth of uh, more than 40 percent year over year which is a number that is absolutely uh, I say unheard uh, of in the uh, you know more developed uh, e-commerce economies uh, in the world and the market is expected to uh, grow almost 10 times in the next eight to um, eight to 10 years. Um, so this is to give you basically a first um, overview of some of the major uh, events, a major uh, investment that happened in the, in the region by basically uh, mainly by the major um, e-commerce giants of China, so uh, Tencent and JD on one hand, and Alibaba uh, on the other. Now, what are um, what am I gonna show you and, and briefly basically present you uh, today? So it's a uh, proprietary study from uh, from our company on the key e-commerce metrics for basically more than 1,000 uh, e-commerce operators in uh, in the region. Um, what it, that is in, uh, in detail, uh, what have we done? We basically aggregated the data that uh, we collect with all the basically e-commerce uh, operator and merchants on, in, in Southeast Asia, including both the, the biggest players, uh, the ones that you have uh, heard in the, in the previous slides, uh, but also thousand of the more, the much smaller uh, merchants that have much, much, much lower uh, total annual revenues. Uh, data is collected in the period of, of one year uh, until basically June 2017 for uh, six major uh, markets in the region, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, and, uh, and Vietnam. Um, how basically have we been able to, uh, to basically to collect the data and just very, very shortly about, about us. We are uh, the region, Southeast Asia, uh, main e-commerce uh, lead generator. Uh, what that means is that we provide uh, traffic, we send a traffic, qualified traffic to all the uh, e-commerce merchants in all the, the six countries, in the seven countries where we're present. Uh, more than 10 million um, users every month visit our seven websites. We integrate and work with more than 1,000 uh, e-commerce partners, send more than 60 million uh, gross merchandise value for our partners. So given this relationship, direct relationship, we have with those e-commerce players, we are able basically to consolidate, aggregate the data, and then um, basically show it to the uh, to the public as it's the case uh, as is the case today. At the same time, we are basically producing uh, content uh, regarding e-commerce around again around the region, uh, around all the major shopping uh, shopping events, uh, ranking of the main uh, players. Uh, based on their uh, traffic, on their on their sales, on their social media, etc. Those those content are called um, our most popular content are the map of e-commerce that you could uh, you will be able to uh, to see by just you know just uh, searching for map of e-commerce in whatever uh, country in Southeast Asia you um, are interested in. So um, uh, now on the specifically on the the content uh, wanted to, to to discuss with you to share with you today. It's, its main findings. Uh, we call it the, the state of commerce, and let's jump into the main uh, insights of, of, of it. Um, first thing first, the one of the most important uh, trend happening, not just in the past 12 months, but since the pretty much since the beginning of the um, of the e-commerce massive growth in the region, is the rise of uh, of mobile. 
Um, in, as you can see from the charts on the left, uh, mobile has grown to now account more than 70% of the overall e-commerce web traffic. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the number now is closer to 80% as we as we're speaking now. Um, and out of the, the six countries, Indonesia is uh, basically by far the one that has an even higher uh, share of, of such traffic with now probably more than 90%, 87%, a bit less than, than one year ago. And in none of those uh, of the six countries, desktop contributes more than 30% of the web traffic. Um, and this is something which is absolutely key to understand the, the basically both the challenges, the opportunities, and the peculiarities of uh, Southeast Asian e-commerce markets, um, because this is a share which is very different than uh, than more developed and Western e-commerce uh, e-commerce markets. Uh, everywhere in the world, we are converging towards those metrics. But what is happening? What has happened in Southeast Asia is basically. Uh, you know, the desktop e-commerce uh, browsing has been completely uh, leapfrogged. Um, and if you basically want to, to compete or to understand the market, uh, as uh, it's safe to say that it's not, it's not even mobile first, but in, in some countries, as in Indonesia, it's really, uh, it's really mobile only. The second slide, the second um, finding on the conversion rates across the region, which means across the different uh, different countries, uh, conversion rates, uh, which is defined as the number of conversions that happen on a website, on e-commerce websites, divided by the, the the visits, the sessions recorded by the, the website, is one of the uh, basically most important uh, metrics of each uh, of each e-commerce both measure the quality of the marketing activities, the quality of the traffic that is coming to a, a e-commerce operator, but also how effective is, um, is the website. And typically, or uh, I would say, the, there's, there's a strong correlation between the, um, the maturity of, of the market, so how um, use our uh, e-commerce users to, to shop online and how competitive is, is the market because obviously the more competitive is the market the more uh, you know, tailored uh, um, solutions are provided by the, the, the e-commerce to try to increase such such fundamental metric um, and this is what is happening in Southeast Asia with the, the strong exception of, uh, of Vietnam meaning that uh, you see that Singapore and Indonesia are leading the pack in terms of uh, average conversion rate. Uh, Singapore, because it's by far the um, the most developed and, and, and sophisticated e-commerce market. Uh, Indonesia, because it's the market where there is the, the highest competition, so the more the, the more and the bigger and advanced players are uh, fighting with uh, with each other to try to you know out compete each other in terms of. Um, basically, quality of their um, their e-commerce offering. Uh, the case of Vietnam is uh, is indeed an outlier. Uh, what needs to be to be mentioned in, in this case uh, is that Vietnam has also uh, the biggest uh, amount of, uh, of so-called cancellations, meaning that um, uh, merchants in Vietnam record high uh, high conversion rate, but at the same time, right after making um, ordering on the on, on the merchants users cancel much more than uh, than in other markets which drive down the uh, basically the net conversion rate and which is also something which is pretty uh, you know pretty challenging for uh, for any e-commerce uh, operator to 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 operate uh, effectively in, uh, in Vietnam um, the other very uh, very very interesting finding as uh, comparing basically the the difference in terms of conversion rate between mobile and desktop. As we have said, uh, mobile traffic is uh, absolutely dominant in, in the region, in each a single country. Um, but what still remains uh, to be basically to, to be done is to uh, further improve the mobile experience so that the conversion rate could uh, basically come closer to what typically the, the the desktop conversion rate is. If you look at the um, basically at the gap between mobile and desktop across the region, 
um, desktop convert better uh, for approximately 1.7 times more than uh, than mobile, and this is a trend which is absolutely common across uh, across each country. Um, something which is also uh, very uh, interesting to basically to, to note and something that needs to be kept in mind is that uh, mobile is used a lot all around the world, especially here in, in the region, as a browsing device, whereas desktop is then used after the, the browsing is done to, to finally uh, make the, the transaction, which is one uh, strong reason that basically is uh, inflating the conversion rate for, for desktop and decreasing it for uh, mobile. Um, other very, very interesting data regards um, concerns the, the average basket size, um, so the average value of the transaction. And um, so the data we have is across all verticals. So obviously there's a huge difference um, depending on, on the vertical, but we had a sample which is big enough to give a very you know, representative, good and representative uh, basically number. Um, so what you see is, and not surprisingly, that the, the basket size is highly correlated with, uh, with the GDP per capita of each country, uh, with uh, Singapore by far leading the, uh, the pack and, and showing a basket size which is almost four times higher than what it is in, um, in Vietnam. Uh, so this is another very, very, um, very, very important, uh, basically, notion to keep in mind. And very often, uh, brands or e-commerce or entrepreneurs that start e-commerce uh, activities uh, here in in the region, they typically benchmark or they use uh, in, in their in their business plan uh, similar uh, basket size than in uh, basically in Western countries. Um, whereas the, the numbers are much, 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 much lower, which makes the whole profitability of basically, uh, you know, of the market, um, you know, quite, uh, quite challenging because, because there is not so much margin to play with, um, given all the costs that the commerce operator need to, uh, to incur. Um, another, uh, basically a more, more in-depth look at the average basket size. Um, is the difference between basket size between uh, transactions that happen on mobile versus transactions that happen on desktop. Um, so not only there's a huge gap in terms of conversion rate that we have seen before between mobile and, uh, and desktop, but also in terms of basket size. This is validating basically what, uh, what I was mentioning you before, that especially for the highest value ticket, uh, highest value products, um, a user typically finalize their transaction through, uh, through desktop instead of, um, instead of mobile. Next, uh, next uh, finding regarding the, uh, the allocation of, of, of e-commerce orders per time of, of the day. Uh, so when do shoppers make their purchase most often uh, during uh, during one day, um, that number is uh, the highest between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. when um, users are traditionally either at work or school, with the uh, uh, exception of uh, Singaporean, who, uh, as you can see from the spike of the of the, of the Singaporean line past 10 p.m. Uh, seems to enjoy a lot uh, evening uh, shopping, much more than in the other countries. And another interesting uh, way to look at it is between the deep of a uh, number of orders between 5 and 7 p.m., where people people uh, typically uh, go back home uh, or have dinner, um, and where people typically browse only via, via mobile, but then don't uh, wait probably to come back home to make the transaction uh, either on mobile or most likely on desktop. Um, prefer day to conduct purchases. Not only the there is a trend uh, between uh, within uh, any any day, but if you look also at the conversion rate per uh, day of the week, you also see quite some um, uh, quite some interesting trends. Um, which is something that can be quite interesting for basically for. Um, e-commerce operators when deciding 
uh, when you know sending, for example, their special or special offers, or where they want their marketing activities to be most um, uh, you know most efficient. So, you, two main uh, trends you can see here. Uh, first one is that uh, there's a huge dip in terms of conversion rate over the weekend, uh, which is very consistent across all countries. Uh, main factors contributing to it is the uh, bigger, even bigger share of mobile that, as we have seen, has a lower conversion rate over the weekend. I will see that in the in the next slide. And yeah, another consistent trend is uh, Wednesday being the day with, uh, on average, the highest conversion rate in pretty much uh, all countries. As I uh, mentioned in previous slides, uh, if you look at the, the, the data of mobile traffic uh, percentage versus desktop over the days of the week, you see that in, uh, on the weekends, in all countries, that number further spike up. Um, with uh, you know Indonesia again leading uh, you know the, the, the pack, where you have already uh, higher than ninety percent access via via mobile, uh, wouldn't be surprised if that number, as we speak, is closer to basically ninety five percent on both Saturdays and uh, Sundays. And finally, when looking at uh, the payment, uh, uh, the, the most popular payment method uh, landscape in the region, there's, there are other very, very interesting findings. Um, basically, uh, Southeast Asia is a region where, uh, with the exceptions of a couple of countries, with the exception of mainly Singapore, the penetration of credit card is still very, very low. And historically, in Western, uh, Western countries, E-commerce payment has been synonymous with, uh, basically, with um, credit card, debit card uh, purchases. So, uh, given the very low uh, credit card penetration, um, all the e-commerce in the region have had to face quite, you know, unique challenges to try to creatively come up with solutions uh, to to overcome such structural uh, structural gap. Um, and as a consequence of that that gap, um, the basically ended also the the, the 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 degree of development of the uh, of the economy in each of the of the six markets. The the percentage of uh, payment methods across uh, each country is quite different. If you see in countries like um, Singapore and Malaysia, the credit card penetration, sorry, the, the number of merchants that offer the credit card as a means of payment is, you know, is 100%. Um, in, uh, if you look at bank transfer, Indonesia and Vietnam, uh, for Indonesia and Vietnam, those are um, basically two countries where the bank transfer is actually the most, uh, you know, the most common way of making purchases on, on e-commerce merchants. Um, cash on delivery, which is something which is not very, uh, uh, you know, widespread in, in Western, in Europe or in the U.S. is absolutely, you know, key, uh, key payment method in uh, in the region, especially in the least developed uh, market. And also installments is something that has been basically has been growing quite a lot, especially in uh, Indonesia and Vietnam. Um, so this picture is changing very, very, very fast with the proliferation of uh, of basically of wallet payments uh, offered up by pretty much all the major players, especially in countries like like Indonesia. Um, so expect that you know scenario to further and that picture to further uh, evolve very very fast in the basically in the months and and quarters to go. Um, so. These are uh, basically this is the, basically the summary of of the main findings of of our study. Um, very happy to uh, answer any question you might have. You see here the basically the URL where you can both look at uh, those graphs and additional ones for the full report. Report and you can also download the PDF. Uh, that's about it for for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Questions you might have. Thank thank. Thank you very much, Matteo. Um, loads of interesting um, data and findings in there, and I think some quite surprising um, things as well. Um, so, um, first
first first question for me actually. So it's, it's really clear that each country um, is very different. There's different challenges and patterns um, in, in each one. Are there any consistent trends um, across the region? Um, let me show you directly the I think the slide which is most uh, I think which is most uh telling is it's the one on the basically on the growth on the percentage of mobile traffic versus uh, versus desktop um, as i mentioned this is really not something that uh western e-commerce markets are uh you know have witness in terms of the at least in terms of the the the, 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 the mm -hmm. difference percentage wise and this also created basically players and and the most popular one is the shopee which uh, is born was born as a mobile only players and very very quickly managed to uh, become of one of the most popular uh, player in each of the the six Southeast Asian markets, and that's probably not something that could have uh, happened anywhere else uh, in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, okay, why do you think um, there is so much interest in um, Southeast Asia? from the big Chinese e-commerce giants? Very, very interesting question, actually. Um, well, the, the main, basically the, the main reason why the, the two uh, uh, biggest uh, you know, rivals and e-commerce players, which are uh, basically internet groups, sorry, which are Tencent and Alibaba, and Tencent indirectly via its investment of, of JD.com, are, are interested in, in, the, in Southeast Asia with especially with especially uh, focus on in Indonesia is because the, the analogies of, of the market of where uh, basically where China was 10 years ago and where Southeast Asia right. is heading, especially Indonesia, are, are quite, quite strong. If you look at, right. the, at, the, at, the, at the data of at the e-commerce penetration in China in uh, less than 10 years, uh, online retail went from my, uh, lower than 1% of the total retail market to more than 25% which is a number which is higher wow. than any other country in the world. So Southeast Asia is right now on average on, on trailing at a, at a similar 1% you know, uh, benchmark. Uh, and there's no right. reason to believe that it cannot achieve what basically China achieved in 10 years. So you know, multiplying by, by more than 25 the size of the, of the market. And so following on from that, do you think you know, Alibaba will become as dominant in the region uh, as it is now in China? Um, I honestly don't think so for uh, for a couple of reasons. The, the, the main reason is that there are already um, quite big, uh, basically big groups uh, fighting under different brands, uh, Alibaba, and it's very hard to believe that those groups will uh, will be consolidated under under it. So the first one is um, Alibaba through Lazada and, and Tokopedia. Yeah. Uh, the second one right. is. Tencent with its uh, direct uh, basically ownership and investment of, of JD.com uh, and uh, Shopee and the third big players okay. which as I mentioned at the beginning of the of the webinar uh, is expected to further expand in the region is, is Amazon and that would be yeah. basically the, the, the first uh, region in the world where basically Alibaba and Amazon could go head to head Head to head. Supremacy of the the commerce market, so that that's really, really, really going to be very, uh, very interesting. And then on top of that, as it happened in pretty much all the uh, the more developed, uh, you know, e-commerce economies, once the, ma the the market mature a little bit, then uh, there are plenty of additional players that focus not not much on the basically on, on the on the on the size, but more on providing mm -hmm. you know ad hoc uh, services and uh, yeah, value-added mm -hmm. services to, to the consumers. So uh, really believe that there's, there's plenty of space for you know, a lot of players to, to still enter the market and for those uh, three big groups to, you know, to keep uh, fighting for the benefit of the consumers. It's gonna be really interesting to see how that, how that plays out um, with Amazon going head to head with Alibaba for sure. Um, okay, and then just a couple of questions specifically about about iPrice. Um, who, who is the core user of iPrice? 
so I price uh, basically what what uh, what is important to to understand to understand our uh, basic our company uh, and our business is that we are a business which is highly um, uh, search driven, right? Meaning that right. uh, when user uh, look for pretty much any products that they can think of, uh, we are able to intercept uh, you know those uh, you know those, those demand mainly through through search engine. Right. Um, so th then the question you know to, to answer your your, your question, uh, our users are um, every single user that is looking for uh, to, to buy anything basically online or to checking mm -hmm. online the prices of any product. So we have a very, 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 very wide, uh, you know, demographics, uh, mm -hmm. not, not any specific, basically niche. Right. Okay. Um, and what, what are the next steps for, for, for the iPrice group? Uh, well, next steps. Uh, I mean, just to keep up with the with the you know with the the, the pace of the of the market is already is already quite a quite a quite a big achievement. Um, but jokes aside, we are you know we are growing uh, you know terrifically in terms of uh, basically in terms of, of of traffic we generate in terms of uh, clicks, sales, and gross merchandise value we are able to deliver to um, uh, you know to our users. Uh, we are. Covering all the basically all the product verticals right now. What we are uh, aiming to do more and more is to provide a more and more tailored uh, user experience for the different vertical. You no know, user that search for fashion product right. uh, is not looking for the same interface as someone looking for I don't know the, the latest uh, you know iPhone uh, iPhone price. Uh, so we're gonna mm -hmm. basically build a more and more uh, customized user experience for uh, you know to provide the best the best possible. Uh, customer experience right, to, right. To, to all the different uh, needs yeah sounds good well um that's that's all we've got time for thank you so much um mateo um thanks to everyone for listening um you will be sent the slides and you can um re-listen whenever you need to share it with your colleagues um as well um and if you did enjoy today's webinar um Mateo and also his CEO um, will be uh, joining us in Singapore at Affiliate Summit APAC. Also, many of the companies Mateo mentioned today, Lazada, Zalora, will also be there. Um, so if you enjoyed today, then, then don't miss um, the event coming up in October. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Have a great evening um, or day um, if, you're, if you're in Europe. Thank you. Thanks so much.